David Grosselow is Managing Director and Founding Member at Bain Capital Asia, joining us live from here good at morning. the SGX. Morning. David, good to see you. Thank you so much for being with us. Good to see so you. So you finally closed a deal with Hitachi Metals. It must be a relief uh, yes. in terms of the headwinds getting there, the regulatory hurdles. Talk us through the process. Uh, it was a, a long process, a very complicated deal. You know, this will be the second largest uh, private equity transaction in, uh, in Japan. Uh, a big company, uh, globally dispersed operations. And so it takes time, but, uh, you know, we were patient and ultimately got across the finish line. Um, you know, I think this is part of the trend that you're seeing in Japan with large uh, corporations embracing uh, change, uh, thinking about their portfolios more strategically, uh, what's core, what's non-core, and private equity working together with these firms uh, to take on some of their, their the most you know, the biggest and most complex businesses. Mm. It's interesting because this is not your only deal. In fact, you've been making a lot of investments, a lot of deals in Japan itself. You talked about companies that are embracing change. Um, at the end of the day, are you looking to make more investments in Japan as a result? Is this going to be your last or are you looking at other markets now? Will definitely not be the last. Uh, you know, we, we think this is the beginning of, of an important secular trend uh, for the Japanese uh, economy, and so you'll see you'll see more of these. And in many ways, the way change happens in, in Japan is some of these large mainstream companies uh, do things that they hadn't done in the past, and and others uh, follow. And we've spent years building up uh, capabilities. We have a very big team in Japan of over 50 people. We have two offices. Uh, but importantly, we have a lot of capabilities to support uh, these businesses. They want to change, but in some cases, they need some strategic direction. They may need operational support. They may need support outside of uh, Japan as well. And that's what we've, we and others have, have set up operations to do that, this. That's interesting, uh, David. Can you talk, in, talk about, uh, about that in a bit more detail? And sure. in terms of what needs to be done, uh, clearly, the imperative is to go beyond the inevitable uh, cost cutting and to really unlock value. What needs to be done? What needs to be changed at Hitachi Metals and how are you going to yes. do it? Yeah, I do think sometimes this is simplified to mm -hmm. cost reduction, but the reality is uh, there needs to improve productivity, but that is to create an engine so you have more cash flow to invest in, in driving growth. And businesses like Hitachi Metals, they serve electric vehicles, they serve semiconductors, they serve very high growth industries. And so, Cost reduction is not going to get you from A to B. Uh, you need to define growth strategies. You need to partner with other firms in and outside of Japan to get new technologies and work very closely with your customers. So it's sales and marketing expertise. It's figuring out which are the most strategic customers and markets to be in. Uh, it's globalizing uh, the workforce and, and the leadership uh, so that you can leverage what's really strong about Japan. It's great technology and R&D. Um, but you can be global and, and nimble. Uh, so there are a lot of disciplines that need to be, be approached here to make it successful, you know, far beyond the, the cost side. And in terms of uh, the broader uh, macro environment in our region, just how yes. tough uh, do you think it's going to be heading into uh, 2023, and especially given the challenges involved with a uh, higher cost of capital? Yeah, I look at it, at, there are some competing forces that are, that are going on right now. Clearly, the global, the global economy is going to face a, a slowdown or face this paradigm shift away from the low interest rate environment that's, I think, uh, fueled growth. Um, on the flip side, Asia has some you know, good characteristics, a, a lot of uh, population and demographic uh, benefits. In some ways, probably a more healthier exit and recovery from COVID because many of the countries in uh, Asia didn't uh, stimulate uh, as aggressively as, as the U.S. and Europe did. Uh, they're not facing as uh, the same intensity in terms of the energy crisis as other countries. Um, you could even argue China's policies were contractionary. And so as China ultimately comes out of zero COVID, that should be positive. Right. So there are some, you have this global economy that's facing some challenges. But Asia has some different, uh, a different profile. And you're, and you're yeah. touching on some of the longer term uh, thematic trends there, including the demographics of this region. Yes. So is healthcare an area in which Bain potentially will be deploying capital? Absolutely. I mean, think about some of the most undersupplied sectors across Asia, just from a pure supply demand balance, healthcare is a huge opportunity. 
Uh, and there's the supply side, and there's also just the quality of care, which is a big opportunity. Uh, we've invested in hospital chains in China. We own a big long-term care facility operator in Japan, uh, pharmaceutical companies. All these are serving this undermet need for high-quality health care. And that's true uh, not just in China and India, but it's actually true in, in, in Japan as well. Uh, getting back to Japan, I'm looking at some of the names you've invested. I mean, Domino's Pizza Japan, Japan Wind Development, Toshiba Memory, Aircraft, Human Intelligence. It sounds like these are really some of the more traditional kind of businesses, but doing well. Yes, we, we do have some te technology investments uh, that are woven in there. Kyoksha, or the former Toshiba Memory, which makes uh, memory chips that go in your iPhones. That's a, a high-tech business and some others. But I would say your, your observation is correct. There are a lot of interesting businesses that are domestic sector businesses. And the common uh, conventional wisdom around those was that, gee, there's no growth in Japan because the population is flat or declining. But the reality is back to this point on efficiency. If you can kind of unlock some of the efficiencies, these businesses have the potential to grow. So our, our wind farm business, Japan Wind Development, they operate onshore and offshore uh, wind farms. And as you know, Japan has a has a big energy problem yeah. with you know the the um, slow tur turning off all these nuclear facilities, and wind energy is a huge growth opportunity for 50 years, maybe 100 years in Japan. Yeah. Some people don't think about Japan and growth together, but there are growthful segments. And in terms of uh, some of the more uh, wilder frontiers, uh, cryptos is that? Do you have any exposure first of all at Bain mm -hmm. and? Uh, is that off limits, given what we have seen uh, with the FTX uh, fallout and bankruptcy? Or is this an area that you are willing to commit capital to if we see some guardrails and if we see a regulatory framework? The latter, yes. Uh, we do have uh, crypto investments. We have a cryptocurrency fund. Uh, nothing in Asia at the moment, but, but in the United States. And you know, it's like any other new and emerging uh, business model. There are going to be significant growing pains, both regu regulatory-wise and other dimensions. Uh, we're going to have to navigate and find the, the healthy, growthful places mm -hmm. to invest, which there are. Uh, but there'll be some other areas that'll be a bit tricky. Okay. David, I want to pick up something you said earlier about wind farms. What does your renewable portfolio look like? I'm curious, because all this shift towards SDG goals, ESG, I mean, what does it look like at Bain? Sure. Well, it's, it's growing. So we have actual investments like our, our wind farms. Uh, we're about to announce, announce another significant investment in Asia in a renewable uh, products manufacturer. So we, we actually support companies with, with capital. Uh, but Bain Capital as a firm has a, a very strong commitment to uh, combating climate change. We have our own internal goals uh, around carbon uh, reduction efforts and supporting renewable materials and, and energy policies. Uh, but we also embed this in all of our portfolio companies. So when we acquire a company, we bring environmental strategies into the blueprint uh, and the operations to, to reduce carbon emissions, to use recyclable and sustainable materials. Um, and this is something we all should be doing. You know, we all have to contribute to the, to the climate uh, goals that were discussed uh, recently and this week at, at, at COP27. It's, a, it's an important uh, obligation, I believe, for, for private investors and companies. And we're embedding it across uh, all aspects of Bain Capital. Hmm. David, we're just out of time. Fascinating conversation. Thank you very Thank much you indeed so much, for uh, joining Great us uh, this Thank morning. You. Thank you, David. Yeah. David Grosslow there of Bain Capital Asia.